have a great show. Thanks, okay, Maxine. I need my hair to look hip yet holy. Hey, hey, careful, they're real. I created the lunch hour so that we could have honest communication. <laughs> Co hosts come and go. It's my show. I get you buzzed. You need me. Good things are coming, baby. Yes, they are. I get a <laughs> Mo fornicating in my chair. I know you. You were on that show. And then you like went to rehab and things got VV dark for a sec. Why is everyone so annoying? A, a bitch is hot. Mo, bitch. I have a Pulitzer. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, you haven't mentioned it in 30 minutes. You're a conservative Republican with all the wrong values. And the moral compass of the show. Heels at high noon. Well, well, well. Look what the cat threw up, ate, and then threw up again. That's how you lay it down, bitches. Your show looks like a circus. You and Nina put my show in jeopardy. What? He's our boss. He's our... And every network is leading with it. It's not personal, it's just TV. What do you think? I'm trying to step on your toes or something? No, of You're course. very white. We really don't overlap. Your shelf life on the show is way past its expiration date. I don't know who you think you're playing with. Watch me explode. Come on, move. Can we, can we go to commercial? Absolutely not. I'd watch my back if I were you, little girl. You know what happens to the ladies who don't play by the rules? They get the ax. Consider yourself warned. You give zero Fs. <laughs> she said my Emmy dress was so tight you could see the stick up my ass. <laughs> oh my. I love daytime. When they go low, I go lower. She is so manipulative. I love it. How are you guys? You sit in the left chair. <laughs> Can you please make some noise for this beautiful, diverse cast? <laughs> wow. Now, Star, this is based off of your book, Satan's Sisters. Now, the first, I did say diverse. Like, was this your plan when it came to casting this show? How much uh, control did you have over that? Uh, actually, it's me you're looking at. Come on, you know how much control I have. That's I right, baby, it was, yeah. It was important that the cast reflect America. And although we did blind casting, meaning we didn't have a particular race that we were thinking of other than Maxine Robinson. Maxine, um, her name is Max Robinson. It is an homage to the very first African-American uh, network television anchor. And she was going to be African-American, but everybody else just simply earned their roles because they were just so good, and I'm glad to have them with me. Yes, that's so amazing. And, like, Vanessa, when you were first approached with this script and, like, the premise, what were your first thoughts when you first cracked open the first page? Well, Star called me at my house, so I didn't have, like, a script sent through my agent. Star called me at home while I was cooking dinner, and she said, girl, I got 10 episodes guaranteed based on my book. So I'm going to give you the book, read it. I'll give you the script and tell me what you think. But you're number one, my number one choice. And I wrote this role for you in mind. If you, if, a quick story. When she was having open heart surgery, the doctor told her that she needed to do something every day to exercise her mind because she might be losing brain cells. So they wanted to keep her mind active. So she started writing the book. And while she was writing this book back in 2010, mm -hmm. she had me in mind for Maxine Robinson, cut to six years later, she gets a deal. She's been, the deal was optioned for five years at VH1. They finally got the go, and she said, you're my number one choice. Read it, but I hope you like it. I read it. I couldn't believe how juicy it was. Uh, yeah. If anyone hasn't read Satan Sisters, watch out. And then I said, are they going to let you do this as a series? And she said, 10 episodes guaranteed. So you already had plans to do this as a television series the moment you were writing the book. Well, you know, when I write, actually, I always put somebody in my mind's eye. And um, for those of you who are semi-old as I am, I'll watch uh, TV Land, Dynasty was my show, and Dominique Devereaux was the greatest diva in the history of the world. And I wanted a modern-day Dominique Devereaux. 
So the whole time I was writing Vanessa Williams' face, because no one does diva like Vanessa Williams does diva. <laughs> So she was Maxine from day one. And there is, there's no question. So my, I only saw her. Um, it was a little bit of a lie. You were my first choice. You were my only choice. Ah, uh, that's very really sweet. So I know you've been very mum on what the real life counterparts may be. And you were on uh, live with uh, Kelly and Ryan. And you said you're more like a Barbara Walters. But when I ask Excuse you. Excuse me, don't say that. It is fiction. Put the, put, the, fiction. put the camera on me. It is fiction. It is a fictional account of it's what it's like to be on a daytime television. <laughs> I do love Barbara Walters. So you do love Barbara Walters. So I want to ask the wider cast, who do you all think the other people represent? You, you want to know who we think we represent? Yes. Um, well, to, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's true what Star said. I mean, I am representing a type of, like, I play the conservative Christian, but my character, I based her on people that I've met, friends of mine, people in my own life, actresses I know, different hosts. I mean, I'm, I'm not imitating anybody. I, I created a character based on the script, and honestly, it is the most fun I have ever had acting. Like, I love, I, I love Heather. She's incredible. Also, Fiona is very... Very similar in some ways to your character. I actually am Heather. I believe <laughs> everything. I just walk on and said, and bam. <laughs> well, your Heather, your character Heather actually has a very interesting nuance because she represents a conservative voice on the daytime talk show, The Lunch Hour. But at the same time, she has two daughters. If you know one of her sons is transgender and knows from a very young age, so can you talk about like delivering that nuance and also how? someone's real life beliefs may be challenged by actual life happening in front of them. Well, I, I feel that playing Heather is a gift because of that, actually. Because I get to play someone who struggles with her values and her beliefs. And, you know, I've done a lot of research um, about having transgender children, um, getting to play this part, and seeing what a struggle it is for families, parents, um, having young children. Um, Vice actually recently did a great piece on it. And it's... <sighs> There's people in this country who are dealing with this situation right now, and they get abandoned by their family and their religious community during a period that is extremely tough for them. And their, their greatest time of need, they're being abandoned. And to get to place someone dealing with that is, and struggling with her own beliefs um, while you know, uh, dealing with this is, is incredible. And, and yet the thing about Heather is that she really loves her, her daughters. And she, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is her family and her children. And it's, it's great. And then they also wrote me a bunch of comedies, so I get to have fun doing that too. <laughs> it, it, the funny thing is it is very funny, but at the same time it does have a very serious aspect of it. Like, Camille, you play a character well, that's... Look at me when you go serious one, right? <laughs> because you do play that serious <laughs> character, do, the Pulitzer Prize winning Mina. I do. And you feel that this role on, on, uh, on uh, the state type talk show is a little bit below you. Can you talk about that a bit? Well, you know, she's Nina's the type of person who uh, is very driven by her career. And I think when she had taken this position, I believe it was more for her husband, who is the politician. Um, and she is someone who, yes, on the outside, she is perceived to be the serious one. But she definitely has a lot of secrets that start to unfold because she is the type of person that will do anything to get to the top. Also, Camille is very funny, just naturally. I'm also very and, funny. Um, with, they definitely, like, even though her character is pretty serious in the first couple episodes, they really started, like, adding in more comedy and just her, her humor came out later on. So it's, it's really Nina's sneaky. watching her. Okay. Nina yeah. is yeah. sneaky. Very. Nina is sneaky. Yeah. Very. Yeah, I vote her sneakiest out of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you play Chloe, you play the millennial on the show. Yeah. And on set as well, like, what does that bring to, like, the way you were casted and the what you're every single day coming in to act, like, being the person It happened that's... in real life a lot as well. <laughs> I showed Camille how to Insta-story, yep. and then she just flew with it. She now Insta-stories more than me, I think. I think I also, <laughs> also, it felt like we'd have a conversation about something in Millennial, and then it would be in the script. Like, it was so weird. We felt like they were eavesdropping on us. <laughs> yeah, it did feel like in the beginning it was, like, a little bit of a push like we want to make her the millennial one and it was like by the second third episode it's like oh no it was just the most natural thing <laughs> it just happened she really is the young one i'm gonna be honest with you the very first scene that we ever shot was 
the swimsuit scene yes. for oh. all of the actresses. And I can tell oh my you, God. having been on daytime television, that is the worst thing in the world. Every host is like, I got to put on a swimsuit. And it's the very first scene they ever shot. When I tell you, this one back here, Miss Millennial, <laughs> she stood around in a bikini and a belly chain eating waffles. I was so furious. We like, we all wanted to yes. kill her. We were just like, for two days we're in bathing suits and as soon as they would cut, we'd all be like covered up and she'd just be like there. Like and that. yeah, we're I, the I, I, I was eating waffles. I, I was eating waffles okay, with, with Chloe. Actually, I didn't have to wear bathing suits. I was just maxing waffles this, with Chloe. This man, his body, it's ridiculous. Well, McKinley, <laughs> you wear a suit most of the time. You're yeah. actually a producer on the show, Absolutely. which I think is amazing is as someone that also doubles up as a producer, it's a stressful job. It is a stressful job. I think uh, Sean's role in the show is to kind of, you know, you have all these different personalities. His job is to remind everybody that we still have a show to make. Uh, you know, so I think managing all the personalities and uh, all the interesting things that happen from um, moment to moment are really cool. And I think, you know, we, we shot this during um, the election process last year. And um, as we were shooting it, it, it it's just obvious that this show is an awesome way to also talk about things like um you know the trans the transgender trans excuse me pardon me i just got off of a plane man apologize <laughs> the whole transgender thing uh, also um just an opportunity to have a conversation um for the sake of having a conversation with these human points of view as the backdrop and i think um, the ability to connect with one another, regardless of the topic, is is the task. And I think this show provides a pretty cool opportunity for that. And I think it provides a good opportunity to see you two, Vanessa and McKinley, on screen. Well, McKinley plays my, my son, yes. so yeah. my stepson. Your adopted stepson. Yes. And hey, wait, I'm sorry, let me tell you this story first. Yeah, yeah, let's First day shooting with Vanessa Williams, right? I get on set, everybody's like, okay, let's go. First take, Vanessa, whoosh. Vanessa's like, listen, Vanessa is like a, a powerful hurricane. They called cut. I, I literally looked around like, shit, I what just happened? did a scene with Vanessa Williams. Let me get back on my mark and do this again. So for me, it was, it was, uh, it was, it, it's honestly such a humbling experience to work with Vanessa. I've learned so much already and um, it's been really, it's been a really tremendous experience for sure. That's beautiful. I mean, she paid me. I had to say that. Was, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no, it, it was Definitely. dope, man. It was, it was, it was, it's been fantastic. And I mean, Star's not a producer name. She's there every day. Hey, McKinley, let me tell you this. You want to know where that came from? So it's like, it's one, it's very much a family. Oh, so it's so, fiction, so, fiction. So, fiction, fiction, it's fiction. Do you want to know where that came from in my mind, in fictionally? Mind, That's yes. was the rest of the sentence. I didn't get to finish. So, Vanessa, one thing I think is very apparent in the show is how you're constantly trying to fight this idea that you're quote unquote washed up on the show. That Maxine's like always trying to assert that she's this. Is the left chair this is my show that's the thing that's said very often now i want to talk about how that you know extrapolates to the wider point of being like a woman on television every single day and how you all are unfairly scrutinized as compared to the men even like the bathing suit episode you were talking about they're going to trot out these women in bathing suits but they're not going to do that with five men on the stage or are you talking about age as well yeah, age yes as well, yeah. uh well that is the wonderful part about maxine's role and particularly one of the plot twists, which we won't talk about in the actual first episode, but uh, she has pressure to stay current and to look as youthful as she can because she's dealing with other women. And in one particular instance in the episode that you'll see, she takes some drastic measures to maintain her youth, which go haywire. Uh, and that's a big turn in the actual episode. So yes, there is unfair pressure for women to look young, to plump up their skin and pull themselves and tape up and, and, and look perfect. Uh, but the wonderful thing about Maxine, which I love, is it doesn't happen, which you will see, and that I can be 54 years old and look the way I am and not have to apologize and not to feel like I have to compete with anybody. And I think it gives women that are my age and older uh, an example on television that she looks like herself. That's what 54 looks like. It's more, it's accurate. There we go. It's an accurate representation. That's what 54 looks like when you Vanessa Williams. <laughs> Everybody just living the truth, okay? I'm 55 and I don't look like yes, that, so don't go somewhere, girl. You better keep it moving. <laughs> Running around this city with the most beautiful woman I've ever met. Give me a break. <laughs> Always speaking truth to power. You know what? So the one person we are missing is the character that speaks truth to power, Mo Tashina Arnold. Yeah. 
talk about her? Like, I mean, she's not here right now, but if she were here, how would she be balancing you guys out? Can I just, well, <laughs> she'd be talking the loudest and making the funniest jokes. <laughs> she is amazing. I, I, what's so great is that my character, Heather, and her character, Mo, are, are friends on the show. So I got to spend so much time with her. And I, sorry, I like jumped in, but I just love her <laughs> so much. And she, like, her presence is missed today. And she's just such a strong, talented, comedic woman who can also just own a scene dramatic as I mean she, I just love her and Mo was not written for a black woman uh, if you want to tell the story yes uh, Mo, Mo was really Maureen in in uh, Satan Sister she was a overweight Irish girl and who's a comedian but um, Tashina walked in and just chewed up the scenery um, she chewed up the scene the script really became hers and she took that role. So when I say it was really cast colorblind, these people earned those roles. And Tashina was, you just couldn't deny her. She is Mo. And she takes words that are on paper and just makes it funny. You know what I mean? She says funny things and she says things funny all at the same time. She's really brilliant. So is there a character that, uh, that most personifies you, Star? All of them. And they each have some aspect of me, the positive and some of the negative. And it was funny. I talked with uh, Hoda today uh, with Vanessa, and she said, Star, of all the people you know on daytime television, who was really the most diva-like? And I had to be honest, it was probably me. I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, I have to embrace the divaness. She um, is the diva. And, and, and I like being a diva, you know? I'm no delightfully interesting, vivating, vivacious achiever. That's who I am. And that's what I want all these ladies to be. It's what I want for all women. My whole job is to empower women. And this show is giving me my dream come true to show strong women doing the darn thing, all vying for the left chair. Oh, yes. What is the importance of the left chair? <laughs> it's the seat of power. If you were to look at a throne, the seat of power is where they start the show who controls the show, and who is the star of the show. And, and without giving anything away for the first episode, that is the ultimate chair. Exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> Does that play across all daytime talk shows, stuff like that? or There is a spot of power, no question. Some people, it's a particular seat on the couch. Some people, it's a particular light that you hit on uh, the shows that I'm familiar with. Um, there was always a seat of power. And, and not that everybody was always vying for it, but you recognized it. Uh, on Daytime Divas, everybody's vying for the left chair. So it's like I'm watching the show and the way that they all have such ambition but are willing to sometimes step on each other in order to get it. Not I would say, though, <laughs> well, the one... Th yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. I feel it. Um, when, one thing that was really great was that Star told all of us before we ever shot, she said, even though these women are competitive, at, at the end of the day, they support each other. And this show, I want women supporting women. And that was, like, throughout the show. So even though the ads, you know, even though it is fun and competitive, at the end of the day, we are not tearing each other apart that Which way. means by the end of the series, <laughs> we are yes. not tearing each other apart. <laughs> <laughs> and that that's a reality. That really is. That's been my experience in 25 years. Um, we, we might step around each other if you were in the way. We might trip one every now and again. But in all honesty, at the end of the day, when one needed the other, we got your back. And Hoda and I looked at each other today and said, you know what, we can talk about each other, but nobody else better not talk yeah. about it. And that's just the difference. These ladies really have embodied what it is to be daytime talk show host, <laughs> and it only took them three months. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because when you were in an interview with Joy uh, Bahar, you would say the same thing. If someone said something about you, like about someone that said something about joy and you heard it, you're going to go right for them. Oh, yeah, I'll take your throat out if you say something <laughs> about joy. Absolutely. Now, she can dog me out, but she won't let anybody else do the same thing. <laughs> so on that note, let's go to some, uh, some questions from the audience. <laughs> you guys, uh, uh, first of all, I want to say Fiona, I, I loved uh, Wilfred. That was a great show. Uh, uh, you guys seem to have be enjoying doing the show, working on it. Uh, do you feel like it's easier or harder, maybe, like, working on a comedy than compared to, like... Um, another dramatic role or, or music? When it's on the page, that's the first thing. And luckily we had amazing writers. I was fortunate to have two of my writers from Ugly Betty that I called and said, I'm doing a new show, I'd love to have you in the room. So we had a great writer's room. So my writers knew how to write for me and knew what I could kill and knew, you know, knew my voice uh, in terms of everyone else. When it's on the page, 
uh, you have to bring it to life. But if it's not on the page, it's a struggle. And that's when you can tell when things aren't really good and when things aren't clicking is because there's really no amazing dialogue or arcs to, to support a good scene. So we were lucky to have amazing writing and uh, the comedy comes out of chemistry. Chemistry and listening. Comedy is a rhythm and you have to listen to where the beats are, where you need to take a pause, don't rush, where you need to hold back. So that you learn your rhythm from who you're working with and it's all about listening and not stepping on each other's rhythm or, or, or space. But that's, uh, I think comedy is written, you gotta hear it, and then you gotta trust your ensemble. Uh, we have another one. Hi, oh, I love all you guys. I've been seeing the ads everywhere. Good. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> that's what we like good. to hear. Yeah. Uh, my question is like, since you guys, it didn't take you, it took you three months to be you know, playing daytime hosts, would you ever consider doing daytime ho hosting? Like, or for Star, would you do it again? Oh, child, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I know you're, you're over. Been there, done that, bought a t-shirt, saw it on Oprah. Don't need to ever do it again. <laughs> Never need to do it again. I, and then, why, why am I going to compete with these brilliant actors? They oh. know how to do it. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we, oh, can we say? That you, that you, that she, Doesn't she has, she has a little Doesn't cameo, not even little, it's a big one, it's nice. <laughs> we We're together. Yeah, yeah, we have a, a good little episode and, together. And I remind her I had the left chair a long That's time right, ago. She <laughs> and she wins, she wins. <laughs> I think we have one more question. I just wanted to know, currently on television now, what is your favorite talk show or talk show host? Uh, no pressure, no pressure. I, I probably, I tune into The View most. Uh, I was on The View, it's opening year back, like 20, I think it was 98 when you guys. 97. 97, yeah. August 97. Yeah, so I, I, I remember dancing. I think I was doing dance with me at the time and, and went out and salsa and enjoyed everyone. So I would have to say The View I have. And I've also co-hosted on The View. So a lot of my references for playing this character. I know what it's like to be in the makeup room. I know what it's like when they're talking about hot, hot topics. I had Barbara Walters to my left and Joy to my right. And, you know, so I, I understand how it works and I know what it takes to, to go through the day. So I think I appreciate that the most. I can honestly say it's weird, but my favorite talk show is Don Lemon right now. I love watching <laughs> Don. Well, the cool night. It feels like entertainment and politics are kind of synonymous these days. I was going to say anything on MSNBC after six is probably. Yeah, kafefe, kafefe. Yeah. Anybody know what kafefe means? Kafefe? And he, Donald Trump, know what that means? Know. Not yes. the question of, I, of the day, right? I thought it was It's an island off the coast of denial. Kofifi, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, I got Fiona Fifi. I don't know. Nickname. <laughs> That's what I was doing. <laughs> no idea. I want to thank you guys so much for coming on. Please. Thank you. Wait, please have a round of applause. Thank you. Vanessa Williams, Star Jones, Camille Gowadi, Chloe Bridges, Fiona Abbaugh, and of course, McKinley Freeman. Thank you guys. Make sure you guys check out Daytime Divas. It airs on Monday, June 5th, uh, 10, 9 central, VH1.